Winona, thanks for joining with us today. <laughs> On National Public Radio this morning, I'm hearing discussion about uh, getting out the vote, and in fact, third-party politics with this uh, presidential election com coming up. First of all, I wanted to know why is it important for people from the tribal community to simply get out and vote? I'll take you a few other places in a few minutes. All right. Well, I think that we're, we have really low voter turnout at about 28%. I think is what we got, which is the lowest in the country, which I totally understand. Native people feel pretty disenfranchised. As uh, our friend John Trudell said, we got the right to vote. Uh, you know, when we were 1% of the population, why didn't we get the right to vote when Sitting Bull was around? Uh, so by the time we get the right to vote, we're a very small percentage, but that percentage makes a difference. You know, over in Wisconsin, you know, the Native people up at Bad River were voting pretty heavily in the recall election. Similarly, if we could actually get out the Indian vote in some of these reservations where we're like half the population or so, we could probably make some change. So I, you know, I'm someone that believes that uh, change is made in a lot of ways. Um, and the election process is one of them. It's not enough. Voting is not enough. You've got to do far more than that. But if you don't vote, in this case, uh, you don't even have a chance of unseating some of these guys. Let's talk a little bit about third-party politics. The discussion this morning had to do with the um, third-party candidates, uh, Johnson, from uh, the Libertarian Party. And it reminded me about the Green Party activism that you were involved with in the Nader Leduc ticket. Third-party candidates, they talked again about, is that, voice, is that vote wasted? Or is there some kind of a statement that can still be made within this political system? Tell me a little bit about why you decided to go with a third party candidate, and some people called you the spoiler. You're the one that allowed George Bush, supposedly, to get elected over Al Gore in Florida. And uh, that's a pretty powerful position if people actually think that because of you, someone else was not elected president. Tell me why you got involved that time, and what's the philosophy behind third party candidates? I believe that. People uh, fought for the right to vote, died for the right to vote, and they ought to be able to vote for people they believe in. Um, it's very hard to tell people to vote for a lot of these candidates because they are very similar between the Republicans and the Democrats. The pull is further and further towards the right, further and further towards corporate-controlled politics, and generally America has a corporate-controlled politic and a corporate-controlled government. Um, in that vein, you need to have some people that actually stand for the people and stand for the land. And that often is third-party candidates. You know, I continue to be a supporter of the Green Party because of a lot of the principles that we talked about. You know, I'm not someone that generally uh, runs for office, although I did run twice. But in my history of 30 years of political work, I by and large have stayed outside of that arena because I think that there's a lot of other ways to do good work in our communities that count. But at the same time, I believe that people have a right to um, have their voices heard, uh, not just heard because we're demonstrating or getting arrested. I think that I'm the face, or faces like mine um, are the kind of people that uh, should represent this country, because the country is made up of far more than white men of privilege, which basically is the U.S. Senate. Is, do you think there's ways in which the political system could be made fairer to allow for that vote? Uh, for example, there's people proposing... Um, Proportional representation. Pro yes. Yeah. Talk, I mean, I tell me a little a, bit about uh, it. Tell us about it a little bit. I, I think that, you know, the, the idea that um, the percentage that you get, you know, will have something to do with your ability to have a voice. I mean, most of the rest of the world that has these democracies has a, a parliamentary system or has a system where everybody gets a shot or everybody still gets to participate. It's not a winner-takes-all system. And that winner-takes-all system that evolved in this country excludes uh, most of the voices that are actually in the, in the discussion. And as you know, you know, Paul, from when we ran for, for office, I mean, they, they said that we weren't significant enough to be able to be allowed into the debates. Um, and so uh, I was excluded from the debate, as was Ralph Nader. And yet, at the same time, we're held responsible for the loss of the election. And so somehow it's rather ironic that we're not a significant factor, but yet we're still held responsible. You know, my position is, is, that, is that Republicans and Democrats should be able to hold their own in an election. And if you're spending so much money, you should be able to get yourself elected if you're a good candidate. And uh, if, if, you know, if you can work enough to uh, offset the politics of corrupt, corrupt voting systems. Um, so, you know, I'm someone that believes that we've got to keep moving towards a multi-party democracy because that's our best shot 
at having something that is um, going to reflect more of the people in this country. And at the same time, you know, I encourage our Native community to actually fortify our own uh, tribal systems, our tribal governments, and practice our sovereignty. Um, in the practice, you know, at some point we've got to move past IRA governments too, because that whole system is something which is skewed against us. But, you know, the whole idea of us being strong as tribal nations, First Nations, in this country um, and internationally is, is really critically important. I got a good lesson a few years ago. I went to New Zealand, hung out with a member of the Maori uh, Party and a member of Parliament uh, for about 15 years. He's been one of the 20 Maoris that's a part of the uh, Parliament of New Zealand. And uh, he represents his people there and he represents his people at home. And I thought, you know, this man had come out of the same politic that I had and fought everything. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he still said, uh, you know, that it was worth the fight. And, and uh, worth the fight. And when he, they went to, uh, his name is Hone Harawira. You can find him on YouTube. But when, the, when he went to be sworn in the last time, there was a huge scuttle because he refused to swear allegiance to the queen and instead uh, demanded that he could take his oath as a Maori and swore allegiance to his land. And so that is part of the politic that I think needs to emerge with a little bit more integrity in this country, where indigenous people uh, are able to participate in our own systems and at the same time participate on our own terms in the, in the U.S. political system. One last question. On November 6, can you give us a hint about what you might do in the booth? Yeah, I'm going out and, bro and voting for Brother Obama because I, you know, I got one shot at uh, the next four years I'm looking at a lot of things. I think we all are in Indian country. You're looking at climate change. You're looking at peak oil. You're looking at food insecurity issues. And we're looking at tough times ahead. And I'd really like a little breathing room. Um, if Mitt Romney gets in and those guys, it's going to be a lot harder battles on the front lines. And I'd like a little bit more breathing room to be able to, to fight our battles. And he is the lesser of two evils, that is for sure. But he is far less. And uh, I'll be supporting uh, uh, Brother Obama at the polls in November. Thanks for joining with us. Mm -hmm. You bet. we could actually get out the Indian vote in some of these reservations where we're like half the population or so, we could probably make some change. So I, you know, I'm someone that believes that uh, change is made in a lot of ways. Um, and the election process is one of them. It's not enough. Voting is not enough. You got to do far more than that. But if you don't vote, in this case, uh, you don't even have a chance of unseating some of these guys.